uh, Baljeet Malotra, uh, founder of CEO of Teach, Teach Lab Inc., and who will tell us a little bit about like implementation and execute. Uh, uh, we're in the execution stream, right? So implementation of uh, security and compliance uh, risk management into the open API economy. So uh, uh, yeah, we will have him like in uh, uh, right away. Baljit, yeah, we're really glad to have you, Baljit. Hi, Madi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you really well. Uh, are you able to share your slides? Uh, yes. Yeah, and also uh, just uh, for the previous speaker, Maché will be probably answering. Yeah, thank you, Maché, for sharing your uh, deck uh, uh, link and also answering the question for, uh, from Savio. So, Baljit, you ready? Yes, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. Uh, that's perfect. We heard you really well. We see you well, quite well, too. Uh, so, yeah, you have uh, 25 minutes plus five minute questions. Perfect. Enjoy, so enjoy your time on stage. Great, thank you very much, Madi. And uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to be with, uh, here in this conference. Really excited uh, to talk about API economy, uh, in particular, API discovery, and what it has to do with uh, managing compliance and security risks. Uh, so, a, a brief introduction about myself and the company. Uh, so, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Tej Lab, a fairly young startup based here in Canada. Uh, in Vancouver, uh, but we have some colleagues in Singapore, India, and in the Bay Area. Uh, before that uh, was with the Black Tech Software, a market leader in open source risk management, successful exit. That was my exit uh, to formation of Teach Lab. Before that with SAP, uh, and before that with Academia, looking into some of the data science and data management related problems um, in various institutes. Um, so today I want to talk about uh, obviously APIs, uh, but also I want to give some historical perspective uh, why we are doing API risk management and why it is important and why the community and the world should uh, should care about it. Um, so I'm not here to teach uh, one on one uh, API, but as you know, APIs have created uh, uh, perhaps one of the largest economies, digital economies around the globe. You know, APIs doing uh, payment uh, processing, APIs providing mapping solutions, APIs providing uh, AI and machine learning, speech processing, and text mining, all kinds of APIs you can imagine. Uh, this story is very much similar to the story of open source. When uh, around a decade ago, when open source was taking the software industry in a very big way. Uh, when we would go and ask uh, any of our prospects or enterprise colleagues and customers, uh, we would hardly admit any uh, any acknowledgments whether the open source was being used or not. Uh, but the typical answer was, we don't use open source. You know, there is rarely uh, some libraries that we have, but eventually we'll take them on a journey and show them how much open source has grown within their different uh, ecosystems. Uh, the graph on the left-hand side shows the growth of different open source projects that we had tracked in the past and the number of libraries that we could see in on places like GitHub uh, uh, and other repositories available on the web. Um, they are, these libraries are running into millions. This is not very surprising because everybody knows now uh, the, uh, the value and the, and, the, and the ecosystem they create around software and services. Uh, the charts on the right-hand side uh, represents uh, somewhere between 50% to 96% of the enterprise applications are built using open source. Uh, however, what companies and organizations started to realize that was, of course, Open source creates great value. All these foundations, Apache Foundation, Linux Foundation, they have created a tremendous ecosystem around open source. But we got to pay attention to legal risk, security risk. And if this code, code is available to uh, in the community, you know, it can be hacked and, and can be exploited for different reasons. Um, and, and there are a lot of, lot of cases in the past that we have seen where these open source libraries have actually uh, created a risk for, for enterprises. 
So where is this APIs or the ecosystem or the API economy I'm talking about? What has to do with the open source? Uh, the point I'm trying to drive here is just like open source, uh, just like open source uh, changed the industry, APIs are doing the same thing for the software industry. Uh, you talk about any application, uh, the software has actually moved into the cloud or they're in the process of moving. Data is moving into the cloud. So more and more software services are being built uh, and they will continue to be built. Today we are dealing, we are talking about hundreds and thousands and the chart on the very right-hand side shows you actually the growth of APIs with respect to the growth of APIs. So each of these blue bars actually represents the number of open source libraries came in each of these corresponding years. And if you are paying attention, then the growth of APIs are actually increasing at a much faster rate than the growth of the open source uh, themselves. So what does it tell us? Uh, this tells us that the amount of APIs that we are going to deal with the, in this open uh, uh, in this API economy is just uh, humongous, and we got to pay attention to uh, just like uh, the perceived risks from uh, open source were were, ca were came late uh, uh, were were received later, but eventually acknowledged that there is a security risk, there is a compliance risk. That's the journey we are taking with APIs as well. Why? Because APIs are becoming open APIs. You know, all these tools and processes and definitions uh, are and standards are coming into place to uh, to build better APIs, to consume APIs in a secure and compliant way. But when you have hundreds and perhaps millions and who knows billions of APIs in place, you know, finding these issues will become very very uh, problematic for enterprises. Now, the, the left-hand chart, uh, le uh, the chart on the left-hand side is actually comparing different organizations, these large vendors like Google, Facebook, comparing their growth of API ecosystems within their organizations. Now, we scanned roughly 2 million open source projects that were publicly available, mainly taking, uh, we, we took it from GitHub, and analyzed how these APIs are being integrated in the open source project, because every company, every organization, either open source project or enterprise solutions contributed by organizations, they want to be integrated with different ecosystems through APIs. Um, so uh, the, the blue chart on the right hand side, the left hand side shows uh, the number of APIs that we could see uh, coming in from Microsoft, uh, or, or Google, or Facebook, or Amazon, and Salesforce. And if you look at the growth of uh, uh, Microsoft APIs, you will see their number of APIs have grown significantly, in, even crossing the number of API integrations we see in these open source projects, uh, taking overtaking Google and and Amazon, which were truly SaaS companies to begin with. Um, but did you have a you have a small bar, you know, that had some numbers. Uh, you know, like the sharing screen. Yeah, if you can hide oh, it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Is this good? Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Is this better, Mahdi? Uh, yeah, it's better. But you can you have a hide button. You you can hide it actually. You know, on the oh, right okay. side. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Got it. Sorry got for it. that. That's all right. Uh, thank you very much for pointing that out. Um, so the, the the point I'm trying to make make is not only the and the. Uh, uh, the uh, ecosystem of APIs is growing in open source, but all these giants, they're competing in this space to build different integrations, to integrate their products and services across these different projects that we can see. And, and uh, not surprising, another, another number on the slide is 83% of the internet traffic is through APIs now. This is a number came through Akamai very recently. And, and this is a very important number to digest. Uh, and why this is important is, in philosophical terms, you know, 83% of the attack surfaces also move to the APIs as well. I mean, in theory, of course. Uh, but again, uh, every API that you build is like a door to your information systems, and protecting these doors is very, very important uh, to enterprises. This is a quick snapshot of what we are tracking uh, at Tej Lab and why we are bringing attention uh, from a, a risk management perspective. As the number of APIs grow, 
as the private APIs become public APIs because there is a, day, a monetization strategy, because a lot of APIs are built um, um, uh, like in open spirit, but eventually there, there could be monetization strategy. So when this large, massive ecosystem of APIs grow around different products and services across different industries in different uh, businesses, you know, we managing security and compliance will be paramount to enterprises. Now here is a, a just a visualization of what would happen uh, to folks like CISO and CTO or other executive levels at the at the high ups who are dealing about a very simple question: Do I know all my APIs across different products and services? And believe it or not, you will hardly find any answer. I'm sure there might be some colleagues on the call. Uh, I humbly challenge them to ask this question within their organizations. Do we know all our APIs across all, all products and services? The reason is we may not find the answer is simply because all these ecosystems I talk about, a developer may download a library from GitHub knowing uh, or, or knowing, uh, hoping to integrate uh, the particular functionality, but those libraries may have different API integrations. And the developer may or may not know those uh, API integrations. Same way. Uh, white label uh, solutions, uh, third party integrations, uh, buying companies, acquiring companies, all these brings different kinds of APIs within your enterprise solutions or your uh, applications across your different products and services. And this question becomes very important. Do I know all my APIs? Now, if we do not do this due diligence, now this due diligence could be part of your uh, merger and acquisition, this due diligence could be part of just building your uh, API uh, uh, store, you know, where you're publishing your APIs. Uh, this due diligence could be part of your releasing a product. This due diligence could be part of your uh, auditing by for, I don't know, with, for GDPR or other aspects of compliance uh, regulations. If you do not even know what APIs you're consuming across your different products and services, then I mean, where do you start from? How do you how do you find out what are the underlying security issues? What are the compliance issues? So uh, unsecured APIs could lead to data breaches and lawsuits. Uh, there is another slide where we talk about, uh, uh, you know, what, what some of the recent uh, API hacks have happened and what kind of damages they have uh, they have created for the organizations. And, and also your uh, uh, disruption of your services. Uh, each API creates a business value, has a technical functionality, and if that API comes down, what is the business impact on, on your products and services? And of course, your profitability. And never forget about the intellectual property issues. You know, there are recent cases where there has there has been legal uh, uh, legal cases, uh, companies fighting with each other, are APIs uh, copyrightable? Uh, and uh, some of the recent judgments have come, which makes actually uh, APIs and the way you call them, the snippets you use, how you call them, what data comes in, what data goes out, all, all those standards around those API consumptions could actually be copyrightable. So when you use somebody's API, what kind of intellectual property issues you're dealing with? And the question again is, if you do not even know your APIs, where do you start? So in summary, uh, Knowing what your APIs are and how many APIs are, perhaps they are in hundreds, perhaps they're in thousands. And especially if if, uh, uh, if you have acquired companies in the past without knowing which API, without doing the due diligence, of course, you can hire an army of people to, to go through your software codes and repositories to see what API integrations to see. But these are not, these are some of the problems, you know, uh, uh, we cannot solve, you know, without automation and intelligence. So for the rest of uh, a few minutes, I actually want to share some user stories. Uh, user stories from our customers, partners, you know, friends and colleagues uh, that have shared these stories and we have learned as uh, as, as we take the, uh, this journey uh, on the API economy. In this particular coffee chat, we are trying to depict that uh, uh, one colleague is telling to another colleague, uh, how feel she goods about uh, integrating a library 
uh, not necessarily which was a legacy legacy solution, but just downloading to integrate Facebook or LinkedIn APIs. Who knows? Maybe some social features were being built, or maybe login ID or login. Uh, uh, mechanisms or authentications were needed to actually uh, integrate those services. Uh, not knowing that, what implications it could have from a security and compliance perspective. Second story is about, you know, sales guy, uh, guys talking about, you know, the delays in the product launch. And the underlying issue is technical team could not integrate some of the payment or location APIs simply because by just reading the documentations, they could not integrate those APIs because these are the APIs they did not build. The documentation might uh, was poor and even the demonstrations that were there or maybe maybe the, the partner integrations uh, had uh, some real problems. Uh, whatever the reason may be, the end result is there is a, there is a product launch which is delayed and these salespeople, they are affected simply because they cannot achieve their targets. So you can see the trickling effect around uh, not having the ability to do this due diligence upfront if you were planning to do these API integrations, uh, either they were open source or from the open source world or from your third party integrations purposes. Uh, again, um, uh, uh, um, a real scenario from a very large corporation that I was part of uh, where the situation was, a CTO invites uh, her team and she informs that uh, we are acquiring a company and the boss says that we must complete the due diligence by quarter four simply because that's the end of the year and we must uh, complete our paperwork or the due diligence so that you know the acquisition can uh, can can go smoothly and and the lawyer colleagues or the technical colleagues no way in we can do this in the next uh, quarter or so, simply because we know that this company, um, uh, we, we have been talking to them for some time. I was part of the due diligence team, but there is no way we can assess their 400 or 300 million lines of code in, in, the next, uh, in the next week or so, simply because it's just impossible for us to account for all the API integrations that we are gonna bring from these, uh, by this acquisition. Again, real pain point, and then people worrying about how many, how many experts we need, how many lawyers we need, how many developers we need to do this kind of, uh, uh, to, to pull all this together. And this is, this is again a trickling effect across your organization on your legal colleagues, on your security people, on the, on the technical managers, as well as the coordinators who coordinate all these efforts. The last story is from a regulator or compliance perspective. Uh, suddenly, the audit team shows up. Uh, of course, uh, it is not unannounced, uh, but they realize that uh, there is no third-party integrations uh, declarations in the in their documentations. And this team, which is sitting on the table, figuring out, uh, wow, this particular application. We know their uh, application is mainly user bases in Europe. Do we even know all these API calls where they are going and where the data is being stored? Uh, and the declarations uh, are not there where what third party API integrations are there. So how do they even start? So this becomes a real pain point for the entire organization, uh, you know, where the legal people, the technical heads, even the CIO and CTO are concerned about some of the penalties they might be looking at uh, if uh, they eventually they find out uh, some of the problems uh, uh, as, as pointed out because this technical hand is saying that we know that we integrated some APIs at the last minute in this particular product, and the data is supposed to be in Ireland, but somehow it is somewhere else, so we are looking at some, some compliance issues. So what's the summary? What's the takeaway I want the audience to take from this, uh, this presentation? Discovery is a fundamental to your compliance and regulations in the API economy space. Uh, you either in your organization or you as a developer, you're dealing with compliance, you're dealing with, if you're a security expert, you are you, you're supposed to benchmark, you're supposed to vet these APIs, uh, you know, all that. Either they are, these are internal APIs or these are external APIs. There is a massive effort that goes behind building these economies within an organization, outside organization, and across different globes. And where do we start? Discovery is where do we start, but that definitely does not, it does not definitely end there. So discovery is about finding, not just discovery of APIs, discovery, you know, going into a marketplace and looking for APIs or going into your uh, developer portal and finding APIs and documentation. Discovery is not just about that. 
Discovery is much more than that. Discovery is about finding legal issues. Discovery is about finding security issues. Discovery is about finding where all, where all these APIs hosted, who the vendors are. Do we have terms of services in place? Do we have commercial agreements in place? So that's what the discovery uh, uh, definition here is. Once you discover those issues, once you discover starting with the discovery of APIs, you gotta figure out what's the security posture of these APIs. Do we have, uh, you know, uh, do we have done some sort of testing on these APIs, especially the APIs that we did not build? Um, maybe you want to do OWASP top ten testing. Maybe you need to be P with PCI compliance. So. Some of the takeaways from the security space is you got to benchmark all these APIs from whatever standards you're you're trying to achieve. Compliance. It is not just about one-time assessment of these APIs. It is not just time, uh, just one-time assessment and discovery of these APIs. You, this is this is a ongoing process. And as you know, governance and compliance, uh, you will you will not have. Uh, compliance and security uh, met objectives if you do not have processes uh, in place to to govern those those uh, those tools and the process and the people and the data across your organization so uh, at the end i would like to say discovery security compliance and governance are the basic building blocks blocks of your api economy that organizations are trying to build within their organizations across their partners and channels and and systems and uh, and uh, uh, very happy to to talk more about that in a similar event like this or this is my contact information uh, i think we have some time for for questions i will hand it back to to madi and the organizer organizers to see if there are any questions at the last minute Thank you very much for your time and the opportunity to be with you. Thank you very much, Baljeet. Uh, uh, thank you very much for uh, for, for the presentation. Uh, today, um, a qu quick question about like more uh, the cultural aspect uh, inside organization. So today, to your mind, who are the main like um, the main decision makers that needs to be aware of these challenges? Uh, to like to to uh, to adopt APIs in a way that uh, that will produce value over time. So I think these are collection of teams, and uh, there is a history uh, uh, in organizations where colleagues have managed open source risks. I see these risks as similar to that, but they are very very different and uh, yet uh, similar to open source risk management. So. Uh, typical teams could be GRC or, uh, you know, we used to call them uh, compliance and uh, technology legal due diligence teams. So these could be teams consisting of uh, licensing colleagues, uh, DevOps people, security colleagues, and technical people who are responsible for doing the technical due diligence. But you asked a very important question. These are also uh, strategies or, uh, or pricing strategies or monetization uh, strategies team, which really need to define what is the economical value of these APIs, and they need to be involved as well. So the short answer is question, it is not one team's responsibility. It is a, collection, it is a collective responsibility across enterprise. Yeah, thank you for this first question. Also, can you just uh, stop sharing your screen so we are we're in the uh, we're in the question session so we can see better our faces. Okay. How do I how do do I press the leave button or do I? No, no, not the leave. Yeah, just here. Yeah, perfect. That's good. That's okay. Right. Uh, an, another another question uh, uh, we had is that what what's for you the best arguments to convince C level and executives to understand the open API economy? I think the fundamental question is uh, the question that needs to be uh, uh, needs to be asked is do you know all your APIs across different products and services? Uh, the answer may be ambiguous. The answer may say okay, we, let, we need to get back to them. But Madi, let me share uh, let me share a, a, a bigger perspective on this. We are taking a lot of enterprises on the same journey we took them 10 years ago with the open source usage, where typical CIO, uh, CIO or CTO. Uh, would would uh, pretend or um, uh, assume that there is no open source risk from a security and compliance perspective. And we are taking some of these enterprises on the same journey. Some Not every enterprise at, is at the same level. Some CEO, CIOs and CEO and CTOs are aware of some of these problems, but many of them are not. So uh, so we, are, we basically need to educate the market and the CISO levels at the CXO levels about these risks in the API economy 
but we don't necessarily need to scare them because there are processes, there are tools that they have already built based on the open source experiences, and that can be applied for the API economy and risk management as well. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you talked also about the fact that uh, you know every API in, is a potentially an, an entry door to your system. Uh, so the, here comes the question about governance. How do you manage, like, uh, uh, let's say, the ability for teams to build what they want, the way they want, to uh, uh, to achieve the value like the, some business units wants wants to have, but also the fact that yeah, it needs to be managed at uh, maybe the corporate level to be sure that the compliance uh, um, are, are respected. J just an example, uh, I've worked with with a bank where the firewall uh, uh, avoids any put or delete endpoint to be used. Like the, fire, the firewall just, just avoids that, right? For any uh, third party uh, uh, application. Um, mm -hmm. so, so, so yeah, so that, that's a hard way to manage, let's say, uh, the ability to interact with the, uh, with the with the with the uh, IT system. So, but how how what advice would you would give to uh, today some decision makers into API programs who needs to manage like the the the, the speed and the uh, agility of teams being able to make their own APIs and the safety and the governance of yeah managing it at the group level. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and I think that I unfortunately I don't have one statement answer, but I can I can start by saying that organizations need to start treating APIs as products. Once they have this product mindset, you know they need to start governing these APIs as products. Now they need to start defining what is their export control policy. They need to uh, find out what APIs at what level of granularity, what data needs to open up. But I think I would not personally, uh, as an executive, uh, take the position, stop all the put calls or stop all the delete calls. That is that is very harsh decision. That stops the creativity and perhaps monetization strategy moving forward. So the short answer is, Unfortunately, this is this is something not not uh, everybody has figured out yet, but there are a lot of good examples from the previous governance processes tools in place that these are large organizations or mid-sized organizations already have in place. We just need to open up our minds and adopt newer technologies and processes to manage these risks at the same time by not sacrificing uh, the monetization or digitization capabilities that could create so many innovations. Let me just spend one more minute on that. I got a really good insights by talking to some of the folks at, uh, you know, Nordic API colleagues. Um, and and uh, in one of the discussions, they said, organizations need to give freedom to, to developers to build the APIs and allow the other developers on the other side to consume these APIs in a very free man manner way so that the actual economy can be created, right? If we start putting too many boundaries around it, we are really restricting the potential of this API economy, right? So if we allow this two-way model where Developers in, inside organizations are able to demonstrate to restrict, uh, with of course, with the help from the legal team, with the help from the security team, with the help with the help of the organization and the process management teams to create different APIs that can create value apart from their organizations. I think that is a way forward, and at the same time, allow the other side of the consumers, you know, the consumers of those APIs, to consume these APIs in a way that could actually prove the markets that could that could create new digital services, which will actually lead away how the governance and the processes could evolve hand in hand. Yep. Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, for that answer, Baljeet. And and the fact you talk about APIs as a product uh, will be uh, will be important at EPIs Australia because the ending keynote, the lock note, is actually uh, about the topic about API uh, product APIs and APIs as a uh, as a product. Uh, so I think we we we're just finished uh, the thirty minutes. Thank you, uh, Baljeet. Thank you very much. Um, again, don't hesitate if you want to. Uh, I think you've shared with the audience your uh, contact infos. And yes, glad to have you, glad to see you in another API Days conference. Thank you very much, Madhi, and the rest of the API Days organizing committee for the opportunity to be with me. I cannot see the audience. If it was live, I would have loved to see the faces and questions and perhaps uh, uh, happy faces as well. Uh, you know, but, but really glad to be part of this audience and really thank you everybody who has attended this session. Thank yeah. you very much. Next API Days Australia, maybe if, uh, if the conditions are, are met. Uh, and the planets aligned uh, to have a, a physical event again. 
Thank you, Baljeet. And now on stage.